We're going to use this little Hoffman grinder today to grind some high-speed steel for our small Shoblin lathe. I also think it's just a good investigation into this machine. It's interesting. Portions of this machine that were surprising to me were, you know, one, how well it's made. It shouldn't be a surprise. It's Swiss. But the controls here are laid out nicely. Nice degreed uh, bar on the top there to do your geometry. And, and down here you can see where you can adjust your rake angle. And in general, it actually ran okay when I first got it. It was a little, little dirty here and there and uh, had the typical marks of use. But didn't seem like it was really worn out. So let's get through this and, and pick it apart and find out what, uh, what makes it work. A couple of mysteries on the machine in terms of some parts. I'm not sure what they are. Stick around. We'll look at those. But that's uh, This is how you adjust the geometry of uh, what you're going to grind. It runs in a little spur there. It's a little channel and a nice adjustment knob. It's full of dust, though, everywhere. And this can, you know, just really... Uh, make a mess of everything so let's give it a good wash and and take it apart it's very interesting the way the saddles made these little aluminum pinned uh portions on the on the sides are to adjust that uh, rake angle and uh, you know i was really worried when i first got it about where was i going to find another wheel but in fact uh as you'll see here this is a pretty standard uh Standard size wheel, and it's was specced out there on the back. It's something you can get from Radiac, so we're working on that. The wheel itself is fine and in great shape now, but uh, you can see that very typical Swiss hammered green paint they use on just about everything. So the table goes back and forth and rides on some bearings, and these are just the bumpers on either ends that... Uh, I'm taking off, so I'm, I'm sitting here fully expecting to find uh, ball bearings in here. And there's absolutely nothing on the internet about this grinder. Um, looks like this company turned into a grinding wheel balancing company or something. It's hard to tell. Regardless, this is a, you know, became a pretty interesting teardown right around here. And there's some looks like screws here holding holding this uh together on the inside so the curiosity always gets the cat and so i go outside so i can see those real clearly to make sure i'm using the right right tools for it so let's put everything in the drink while we're messing with this table and, and get it all cleaned up And there it is taken apart. And look at these bearings. I'm not sure exactly the name of these. Uh, you you can, uh, the company that makes these is very much still in business and you can get rails from them with these bearings. Very similar to this. This is a much older set, but you can see how the, the little uh, thin sheet of metal holds each one of those cylinders and they're, they're opposing each other. So this company is called knee burger interesting very interesting so this table runs back and forth really smooth it's underneath where there's not a whole lot of grinding dust there's a little bit right here as you can see so i wanted to take it apart and, and give it a good go and i was able to find their website and find out that they need uh, velocity 10 so we uh cleaned it really good and and lubed it back up and and we'll put it together and put it to use. So that's a uh, another way to, you know, really solidly position these things. And, you know, I really don't have any idea how old this grinder is, but it's uh, very likely 50s or 60s. So it's uh, pretty solid technology for the day. All right, so we're getting these all cleaned up and just takes a little fiddling to install these. They came apart fairly easily and uh, ended up going back together pretty easily too. So I, I'm putting a note in my book on that one. That's a pretty interesting little way to 
hold something uh, in, in between some hardening ground rails with bearings that are good for, you know, it looks like you're pushing on them both ways, a lot of different ways, and it just doesn't bind. Those are, those are some pretty slick uh, little bearings, uh, bearing surfaces, roller guides. Uh, for this uh, for this neat little grinding apparatus So I'm just putting the bumpers back on uh, There's one on both sides. It just gives it a bump stop Let's it bump between the two sides Really interesting design really clever really simple And I got into the housing pretty good cleaned it up and uh, Here's all the parts looking ugly. This is the bottom of the pit here. We're starting to go back together this is a commodity granite, guys, so let's not get excited about this thing. It's uh, used off the shelf. Don't know if it's in shape, but uh, it's a very handy surface I keep around at the shop for uh, variety of things. So uh, it's not how I treat our aerospace quality one that's in the other shop. So we cleaned a lot of that up off camera. Didn't get it all off, but, uh, you know... It's a useful it's a it's a useful machine we need to be using it here so I have no idea what this particular thing does it doesn't bump into the table might have to do with another attachment that didn't come with the machine we'll just put it back together and leave it and here are all the parts on the table after coming out of the ultrasonic bath and we're just putting everything together giving it just a little light touch of oil on the surfaces that are gonna rub and moving together getting everything tightened back up so we can use it here and and the table slides on beautifully that's one thing that does get full of dust on this little device is the rake adjustment screws back there they they tend to get some uh grinding debris all right there we are and that's real easy to see as as the operator exactly where that is underneath the machine while you're grinding with it. So looking down from the top, you can see we're set right at zero. And this is how the rake is set for grinding the insert. And you can tell a lot just by this machine. There's not much negative rake you can put into the piece, but you can put up to 30 degrees positive rake on it. So it's a small machine built for grinding uh, tools for small machines that turn fast, small slender stuff. It also can, can do the relief. Rake and relief are related the same face of the tool. So this is really, you know, cleaned up nicely. It looks like it's going to be super easy to use. And there it is all done. Now the geometry is set up here on the top. And sometimes you need to add a one, two, three bar when you're grinding to help you hold your carbide in place. But I just hold this all by hand. There's no no big heavy cuts with this and you're just moving it back and forth on those Schneeberger bearings to uh, get your carbide face to be at the angles you want. Now this is off of our other bigger Akuma lathe and uh, we're going to focus on that insert right there which I like its geometry very much but uh, I'm not going to buy all sorts of new tooling for this small lathe I just want to copy some of the tools that I commonly use on on the larger lathe for their from a geometry standpoint, at least to get a generic set of tooling ready for that machine. So the Akuma's the Akuma's pretty tooled out uh, with inserts, and those are great. And you can tell you know big negative rake on a lot of this stuff. And here are the boring bars at the end, and we can grind these on the Hoffman as well. Just going to need to have a lot of relief on these for ID, uh, ID boring, especially for tiny holes, so they end up being pretty small like that. So let's go back to our manufacturing guy here, and negative rakes are for taking a lot of material off. Bigger lathe is where we use them, but we want to get the positive rake insert for, but for the geometry that we're looking for. So there's, there's so much shown about uh, inserts, and I would have to say uh, some of this came from the ISCAR website in terms of some of these graphics. But the WNMG has been one of my favorites in terms of geometry. It's got that 80 degree tip, 90 minus 80 is 10, so five degrees on each side is what we're looking for in terms of geometry. And this shows you how they use a, a flat insert and then still get that big negative rake in it by grinding the rake angle into the tool holder. 
So this is uh, one of the tool holders that we're trying to mimic. It's the one in gold there on the right. And it's got that nice big fat trigon in it, etc. So coming back over here, let's, uh, let's get our positive rake and that they are for lower cutting forces. <clears throat> and this reduces the risk of vibration and gives a better surface smoothness. We all like that when we get a great part finish. The low force enables the machining of slender parts, which is what we're looking for with our small lathe. So there's that trigon insert in a part, and it shows that as a 95 degree altogether angle. But what we're looking for is the five degrees right on the cutting edge so that the tip can get right in there and make sharp corners when you're turning right up to them. So there it is. And it has that front angle five degrees got a little piece of brass in there and this <clears throat> this setup sitting here on a little little super tiny big a little a uh multi-fix but there's that really sharp shoulder it's taking a little bit of material all the way out as it comes out makes that beautiful surface finish and this thing can just cut you know beautiful little pieces uh of bronze to fit You can see the detail it's cutting there and the scale at which we're working with. That's a tiny collet that that's in. It's a half inch piece of bronze overall. So we're down there cutting something that's, uh, you know, quite small on this order of an eighth inch on that uh, last diameter there. Thanks to Robin Renzetti. He, he made this video some time ago and it has really helped me with machining. He just uh, made me fearless, especially when it comes to taking in work and knowing that you can get it done. This has just uh, been an amazingly influential piece for me. And thank you, Robin, for what you've done for the YouTube community and probably shops all over the US and the world, really. Now, this is no Rob Renzetti insert, but it's not bad. There's our ID chamfer. So there's a little bushing and it has a big burr on its inside diameter and then the customer wanted a little lip on it. So we made it. And that cut those beautifully, just like the customer wanted, hundreds of them. So from grinding to making those things in a day. Again, thanks to Robin. Now, here's some um, screen grab material for you on turning rake that you can uh, use in your shop. But uh, we made tons of these little rings and uh, quite possible with uh, the skills that uh, are in this, uh, in this video and elsewhere. So here's, here's how we did it. Here is one of the standard little tools you have, and let's take a look at it. And there's just the cemented carbide on top of the substrate kind of in the back. We'll put the depth of field back to it so you can see it in the background, but it's already got that positive rake on the top surface. Now let's look at it from the side and look at this other big turning face. And you can see it's just cemented into that uh, substrate on bottom. And we've got a nice little point here. I mean, we're zoomed in very close. And again, you'll want to have some sort of uh, fairly fine grit stones for stoning these and honing them to get off all the little burrs and uh, make sure they're super smooth and sharp. Here's some of the various carbides you round up when you go to trade shows and the bash elsewhere. Here's some good oldies, uh, some Williams and Kenna Metal. They've been around, they're perfectly fine to use and to resharpen. Uh, there's some cobalt, that's a uh, carbide with cobalt in it. They're all forms of carbide. And here's sort of my little kit of a uh, few things I've put together for our little lathe. And then here's some grinding stones down to, you know, some pretty fine 800 grit. There you go. So you can find these on the internet. You can find kits that are relatively inexpensive, but, uh, you know, spend your money on a grinder. So let's set it up with a five degree rake and uh, let's get after it. So I just set the geometry on the little round wheel at five degrees. Have to do this kind of on the outer lip there, but uh, a couple of whacks with the wheel doesn't take a whole lot to get that geometry put in there. And 
again, you know, we're not taking a whole lot of metal off. This this shouldn't really take long. And again, you can see the in the back there, uh, one, two, three block that I'm using to help me kind of line things up. We need to change that angle just a little bit. It's five degrees the other way as well uh, on the geometry that I'm using, changing that on the front. And then the rake is still five degrees underneath. And that's what it looks like. Nice little carbide. That's the one that's gonna get on the inside corner for me here. So uh, a lot of plans call for a sharp inside corner. And most of the kits you get don't really have that geometry that like I, we talked about earlier that, that models uh, WNMG. So this is the insert I made to that has the WNMG geometry, but it has the rake angles for positive rake angles for materials like this and for slender parts like this. So this is just turning very nice little uh, super tiny ice cream cones. And we're just gonna come down here to this inside corner. We're gonna go a little further. You'll see it start to uh, grab a few chips when we get right up next to the face. All right, we're about there, a little further, there it is. Now, as we, as we face that out from that point right there, if we just go, go from turning to facing, that just makes a super nice finish on, the, uh, on that face. And there's your nice square inside corner. Perfect. Thanks for watching. Most of the information that you've seen on the screens here is also down below in the descriptions, as well as some of our other resources. I really appreciate you watching. I hope it helps you in your shop. Thanks.